Hello everyone, Tasha here with Butterfield Up Packer Ranch. Happy Packer Tuesday. So welcome to the third installment of our video series about how to process alpaca fiber. So far we have covered skirting and sorting. That was the first video. Then last week it was tumbling and washing. Today we're going to do picking and carting. These are the final steps before we actually get to spin the fiber. If you're interested in learning more about all of these steps, you'll want to wait till the end where I tell you how to get the companion guide about how to process alpaca fiber. I have beside me the fiber that we washed in the last video, and you can see how it's kind of clumped together. The job of this picker is to pick the fiber apart so it's all loose like this. That's its whole job. And there's a variety of different looking pickers out there. Mine is a homemade version uh, found again on a blog post that I'll uh, link down in the description box so you can find it. So I'll show you how this works. Um, well, first of all, let me show you the picker itself. So it is made up of a number of nails here. There's nails on the bottom and nails on the lid, and this lid moves side to side. I'll put the fiber on one side, the, I'll run the lid across, it'll draw that fiber across these nails while picking it all apart, and then it'll end up over here, or usually mine just stays caught up in the nails and then I have to take it out. Um, but the idea is that it ends up over on this side as well. So the only modification to that blog post um, that I'm going to give you is that I made it wider. I wanted um, a wider base to work with. I forget how much wider uh, we made it, but nonetheless, you can decide that for yourself. And it has worked really well. Um, something that I do is I do wear gloves while I do this just because um, I make crochet tutorials so I need to make sure that my manicure actually stays looking nice and these nail heads here I could easily get um, caught up in that. One thing I would suggest and that I'm going to do um, in the future here is get some felt or create some felt out of fiber alpaca fiber here um, and cover these nail heads so that um, as I'm grabbing for this handle there's nothing there to mess up my hands or my nails or whatever. Okay. So we'll just start with this little glop over here and just move it side to side. However much you put into your picker, you're just going to have to uh, kind of experiment with. So I just keep running it across until, you know, all the clumps have come apart. You can see some uh, stay on the lid and I can pick that off. Working with these nails, just like with the tumbler, be really careful. Um, I do use a knitting needle. That, uh, for me, this works really well. It's a size 4. So I can put this in between those nails and lift stuff right out. Um, so one side of me, I have the washed fiber. Uh, usually, actually, what I'm working with is just tumbled fiber. Um, depending on what my final product is, it does not always have to be washed at this point. Um, but now the picked carter, uh, sorry, picked fiber goes into a bin to my other side. And this stuff, after it has gone through the picker, is called a cloud. In case you ever want to know some of that terminology, now we have a cloud of fiber. So you saw me take out this tiny, tiny, short bit that's not going to be good for much of anything. Um, during this phase, it's another time for VM and dirt to fall out. So you can see I just picked out <laughs> another little bit of hay there. Um, I still see uh, dirt in here, but as all this is opening up, that dirt is falling out. So this, again, another piece of equipment that's going to have to be cleaned on a regular basis. Usually after each batch, I come back with that same little handheld vacuum that I used on my tumbler, um, and I clean this out as well. And then the next um, step is the carter, and more dirt is going to fall out with that. So like I said in the last video, each step, 
more and more dirt is going to fall out. So by the time you have, um, you're getting to your spinning, I mean, most of the stuff is out. Okay, so the stuff here that's on the bottom, again, I would take my knitting needle and it so easily comes up. Um, and I'm still seeing little bits of VM in here. So, you know, it's at your discretion. Um, how diligent you are about this, what what your final product is, and how important it is for all these little bits to come out. Um, this, for me, is going to become dryer balls, so naturally I want all the dirt and the VM out of there because who wants that with their clean laundry? <laughs> Now we have moved on to the drum carter, and I think this is actually one of the more fun pieces of equipment to work with. Um, I've heard some people say they really don't like drum carters, but I really do. Um, and what I have here is a Brother Drum Carter, which is a newer company, um, and I really like it. I do have the finer teeth on here because I work with Alpaca all the time. You can get um, different DPI. I want to call it. Um, I'll put the correct thing down on the on the video there for you. Um, but there's different cloths that you can get on here. Get for this um, in which the number of pins per inch differ, and that's all going to depend on what type of fiber that you're using um, and blending. So we'll start here with uh, some fiber and. What you'll want to do is laying it out in the tray. When you put the fiber into the drum carter, there's a couple things you want to keep in mind. You want to spread out the cloud here enough to where you can actually see the drum carter beneath it. You don't want this super thick. You want to get it up to the small roll, which is called liquor in, and you just want it to touch it enough in which this liquor is going to catch it. So these rolls are actually going opposite directions. Uh, so the liquor in is going to get it first and feed it onto the drum carter. And there will be some things that end up on this liquor in and it's the smaller bits, the things that are not really premium or wonderful for uh, yarn, which is usually uh, what this is going to be ending up with. Keep in mind I, my goal is dryer balls, so it's a little bit different. I am going to have a lot of short hair sticking out and all that, and for my purpose, it's totally fine. If you're going for nice yarn, you don't want that, but then again, you wouldn't have short bits in here by this time. You can see I got little bits here, and that's fine for my purpose, and I'm just showing you how to use each of these equipments. Okay. Got a big clump here. Watch out for clumps. Your drum carter won't like clumps. It won't work so good with big clumps, which is why you pick this before you card. All right, so here you can see the fiber has started to come through. And I'm just going really gently. You can start to see, all right, short bit got cut on the liquor in, and that's going to stay there. That's totally fine. And you want to move slowly at first. Keep an eye there. I think I had too much at that point, but that's okay. And as you bring it across, every time it passes through, it's going to get pushed more and more down into those pins. I can see here how some have come over. I, either I use it with my hand or I'll take a tool and kind of get it off the edge and it'll make its way in there that happened to have got on the edge. I like to make sure that all that stuff gets processed really well. So you can just continue adding. Yeah. Now you can also feed it just with your hands here if you want to redistribute 
or you just want to add it directly on you so you can do that too. Okay, so there's OVM right there. I'm going to take that out. An attachment you can get for the drum carter is uh, a brush, and I forget what it's called, um, but it pushes the fiber down into the needles or the pins so that you can get more and more fiber on there. Um, I didn't buy one of those. What I use instead, uh, this is for wallpaper, putting on wallpaper. <laughs> um, but the bristles are soft and they it's wide enough for this drum and it works really well. So I just put my elbow on this side of the drum carter and rest it here and move it and it pushes all those in. So there is, you know, an inexpensive way to do this. People come up with all kinds of ways in which to do these different parts. So um, there I'm just pushing all that in and anything that was sticking up. I actually don't have very much fiber on here at all. So let's get going. I never explain why you even have a drum carter. As you can tell, it's kind of like combing your hair. It's going to make all of the fibers align really nicely. Um, and for my purpose of felting balls, it makes the outsides look very nice. Um, and But for yarn, which is the purpose of all these videos, this is the final step before spinning. So this has all of the fibers nicely combed out and aligned so that you can actually sit down and draft it out and it comes out beautifully for the actual spinning part of things. Now I haven't filled this up. It can, there's quite a bit more that can go on here, but there's enough to show you, uh, you know, how to use the machine and some of the things to do next. Now I've only, uh, loaded this up once. I'm going to remove the fiber off of the drum carter and run it through one more time. So you want to use a, a doffer. I think this is called a doffer. <laughs> um, but there's going to be a part on the drum carter uh, that does not have pins. And you can see right here pretty easily that there's no pins there. Um, so use a doffer or you could use, I put it away, a knitting needle or some kind of tool that will get underneath of here and you'll be able to lift the fiber just be careful of your knuckles on these pins, they're very sharp they're going to hurt you Still working with the VM. Okay, so now I'm going to take this off. So now I have what is called a bat, where it comes off as one piece off the drum carter. But what we want to do for our second pass is separate this down the middle lengthwise. Ready to take my bat off of the drum carter and what I do is I take tissue paper I have a lot of white tissue paper that I got um, after season sales 
really inexpensive. So one sheet of the tissue paper and I cut it lengthwise. So it is the width of my drum. And I'm gonna roll the bat off. People use different tools for this part. Um, two dowels together, you can do as well. Um, I just do it this way. <laughs> Now with the tissue paper in between the layers of the bat, it won't stick to itself and it'll be easier to use when I want to later. Now that we have picked and carded, we are ready to spin. And that is the final step to making alpaca yarn. I will have a special guest on the next video who is a wonderful friend of mine and a wonderful spinner as well. Now, I personally am not really a spinner. I know how to. I've used a spinning wheel before and I understand the basics of it. But it's not really my thing to sit down and hand spin. So I've invited my friend to come and do a demonstration for us and to answer questions. If you have questions you want me to be asking her, uh, comment down below and I'll make sure to get that in the next video for you. If you want the guide outlining these seven steps that takes alpaca fiber from shearing day to yarn, you'll want to go down into the description box and find the link where you can sign up to receive that download. Um, I am still working on it. It will be available at the end of this series, so it'll be sent directly to your mailbox. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it out with your friends, and remember to subscribe to the channel. If you have ideas for other Pack of Tuesday videos you'd like for me to do, uh, leave that down in the comments below. It could be fiber related, it could be alpaca related. I am open to all kinds of ideas. I'll see you on the next video.